beauties, welcome back to another fabulous confabulation with me, Jay Mills. Now today I have the pleasure of speaking with a beauty who has a heart for directing. She is a re casting director for feature films like Miramax award winning Just Another Girl on the IRT and A Brother's Kiss. She has also casted for the Fox show New York Undercover and Spike Lee's Girl 6. She has also directed interstitials for Nickelodeon's Black History Month. I would like to welcome Miss Tracy Moore. Thank Hi. you. Hi. How are you? This is so good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So fun. <laughs> so now, how did you become a director? Um, and what inspired you? Well, um, I honestly think I've always been a director. I think that. Um, I think it's been something that has been dormant, and the, and what has really sort of um, awakened it is casting, because okay. as a casting director, you're in the room, you're with the talent, and they're doing their sides, pages of a script. Right. Yes. So, um, if they're not doing it the way in which I know the director wants it to be done, and I see talent, I'm going to direct them in how they should interpret those sides. So, I think that I've always been directing in the casting. Um, what inspires me to direct is that we a voice. I have a okay. voice, and I want to say something. And I want to say something with my friends and all my all my friends are actors, <laughs> so I want to use them. Nice. So now you started as a casting director, yes. and you also directed music videos and TV shows. What are the what's the differences between the two jobs? Um, music videos um, in directing music videos. Videos, they're like uh, mini feature films. Mm -hmm. So you have maybe two days, but you have at least one day to shoot the whole thing. So as opposed to television or film, you have a schedule yeah. daily, so it's a little more time. Um, I think working with music videos has given me the short version of feature film and TV. And so it also means, you know, moving at a different pace and having to figure out uh, there's always fires on sets, how to put them out. So um, I'm inspired by I'm inspired by so many things. I'm inspired by the, the time in which we are in 2018. I'm inspired by the fact that I can create something and have a voice and say something and have through other characters. Um, and I'm always inspired by other directors. Nice. Just always inspired. Yeah. Now, what would you say is your favorite out of the two, casting or directing? I would have to say that directing is the funnest. <laughs> um, not everybody likes, like there are directors who will say, I don't like the audition part. Right. There are directors who don't like, let's say, location scouting. Okay. I love every aspect of filmmaking. I love talking to the hairstylist and seeing their idea of the hair and the makeup and the wardrobe and what the set looks like. And, and even though I know it's a set, I want my actors to come on that set and live in that set. Right, right. So. And you can also, you know, put your 10 cents in yeah. about it. So that's what's cool about yeah. being a director. Yeah. It's all about the artistic side of everything. And so communication you know, is and key. you got to yes. be able to communicate not just with your talent, but with your crew. You know, and you also want to support your crew in a way that they don't feel overworked or mm -hmm. unappreciated. Mm -hmm. So I love my people. <laughs> <laughs> so now you moved from California to New York to pursue this career in directing. What advantages do you have here in New York that you didn't have in California, maybe? Well, I, I, I feel like there were plenty of advantages because... Technically, I'm like right across the street from Los Angeles because right. San Francisco is not that far away. Mm -hmm. um, I felt it would be more of a challenge for me to move somewhere where I didn't know anyone and to really see um, if I could just sort of stick my, you know, put my roots down here and say, all right, let me see what New York has to offer. And 34 years later, I'm still here. So. Right, right, nice. <laughs> because it's, it's funny because a lot of people are like, I want to go to California yeah. to pursue a career in, you know, film and TV and all of that. So I just thought it was interesting how you came to New York instead to pursue the same. And New York, for actors, New York is the study. This yeah. is where you study in the mm -hmm. training, right? And then you go to L.A. and right. you work. So. Right, exactly. But for me, it was more of theater is my love. So so I really, oh my God, I love theater. Me too. I do. That's, that's my final chapter 
really? is directing on Broadway. That's it. What's man. your favorite show? Um, oh, God, I love. Right now, I want to see the Iceman coming. Okay. Um, um, the last show I saw was Sweat, which was a really good. I heard of it. Yeah, that was really mm. that was a great show. So, but anything on Broadway, I'm, yeah, yeah, musicals, yeah. whatever. Nice. Yeah, I I want to I really want to see Once on This Island. Oh, that yeah. looks good too. It Very looks colorful. really good. Yeah. yeah, Caribbean style. Yeah. <laughs> so not only do you direct shows, but you also provide students with like acting workshops mm -hmm. as well. Now, what do these workshops consist of, and how does it prepare you know aspiring actors to in a professional career? Great question. Mm -hmm. So the question, so the classes that I teach, I teach adult classes from monologue study to scene study to character development. Um, the recent class that I have now is how to audition starting Ooh. June 20th. Nice. <laughs> I'll give you information. Okay. And um, so that's how to audition. And then I have children classes. So from seven to 12, I have um, the spirited child and then uh, 13 to 18, the spirited team. And so the classes in my classes, our motto is to empower the person inside the actor. And mm -hmm. you can go pretty much, especially in New York, you could go to a lot of different acting classes and a lot of different acting teachers. Um, the thing that I stress in my class is working on the set because that's one of the things that I feel is not taught in classes is how to work on a set. You need to know the terminology on the set. You need to know what jobs specific crew people have right. and the relationship that an actor has. All of these things are empowering and all of these things build your confidence too. Um, so I'm really about building a strong acting foundation for actors and also it's a mindset. The spirited part comes from I witnessed my journey here. I wasn't unconscious throughout the whole thing, but I came here knowing two people. And now I know too many people in a loving way, but all over the United States and 98 countries in Africa. Now in Hawaii, I'm going to be teaching in China. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling to be able to build something based on my experience. And I base it on my thoughts, my words, and the manifestation of it. And I told my son today, yeah, we have those days where we don't believe or we don't feel that we're not. We have those, yeah. But you know what? As long as you could go to your happy thought and get out of it, then we're good. Right. Right. As an actor, I know I always look forward to asking this question. Mm -hmm. like, what are some attributes that casting directors and directors look for in actors? Yeah. Confidence is the first thing. Okay. Okay? Because before you open your mouth and recite any lines, you walk in as you. So there's two things. I'm a casting director, but I'm also a producer. So when I deal with actors, from a producer standpoint, I want to get insight into your personality. You could be talented like crazy, but have a bad attitude. Yeah, no one wants to work with. So and a bad attitude is expensive. <laughs> because right. I won't say their name, but I know somebody who wouldn't get out of their trailer for eggs. Eggs. Um, the eggs were spread. Okay. okay. <laughs> so right. that could cost me money. <laughs> right. Right? So these are the things that I say to actors. Come in with a pleasant attitude. Like mm -hmm. you want to be there. Right. Exactly. That's what be you want to do, right? right? Be grateful. And then know that every opportunity is that an opportunity even if right. you don't get cast those people behind the table will remember you talk about exactly. you to other people so showing up on time which is 15 mm -hmm. minutes before your scheduled appointment mm -hmm. so that you can breathe and calm yourself because nerves never leave you um being prepared doing the work that you need to do prior so that takes away the additional nervous energy that can come in right and then the confidence in knowing that I'm going to come in, I'm going to do my best work. Right. That's all I can do. Right. That's Someone it. like that is yeah. easy to work with. Easy to work with because I believe auditions are 50% talent, 50% personality. Mm -hmm. We have to get to know you. And right. where we get to know you is how you walk in that room. Right. How you shake my hand. How right. you give me eye contact where you don't give me right. eye contact. And then before we start the audition, 
I could look at your resume and say, oh, okay, yeah. so I see you work with my friend Robbie Reed. I, you know, and we have a con in conversation is where I'm going to find your personality. Right. And it's come down in auditions where a director said, Tracy, who has the better personality? It's come down to that. So it it's imperative that actors show their true personality, not a facade of who right. they think we want them to be, but who and you, you can tell. Yes. Someone's putting on you a can facade. absolutely so, tell. Yeah. Yeah. It's not them. It's mm -hmm. contrived and they're not comfortable in that right, space. Right. So So yeah. they try to put on a an act of how they think they yes. want you to see. And you them. don't know what I'm thinking of. Exactly. You have in my head and I, exactly. unless you know me and I tell you. <laughs> right. <laughs> that already is too much work. Just right. focus on what you have control right. of. Right. And it's a small business as well, so Yes it, it is. We around. talk. It pays to be kind. We do you talk. You never know who someone knows. And I have I have casting director friends in Los Angeles who mm. call me when New York actors are out there and really? they'll call me and say, Tracy, do you know such and such? Or they have fax when fax used to be around. They used to fax me photos and say, do you know this actor, Tracy? Because I'm auditioning them and they're saying mm -hmm. they know you, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, we communicate. Right. So that's important for actors to know. We, we're we watching. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you also have clients that mm -hmm. you do private lessons. Yes. With. So now if a beauty was interested in working with you one on one, how could they get in contact with you? Um, well they can email me. Okay. Okay, so I have Tracy, which is T R A C E Y more M O O R E casting C A S T I N G at Gmail dot com. I'll put that. <laughs> Do you have any advice for aspiring directors? Yes. Um, I would say for directors to um, whatever capacity, like let's say you want to do TV, mm -hmm. I would watch a lot of TV okay. and specifically <laughs> the work that you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, like if you want to do, you know, direct an episode of Insecure, mm -hmm. I would definitely know the show. Right, exactly. You know, so there's some, um, but I would say the best advice that I could give anyone is to do your own thing and own it. Mm -hmm. So your director, direct. That's what somebody told me. Then direct. Write something. You know enough actors, shoot it, and just get it out there. Get it out there to film festivals. Um, get your friends together in terms of actors and just shoot. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Okay. Let's maybe start in school and like network as well. Networking is excellent. Is networking is go to film festivals. Okay. That's the best networking is going to film festivals. And then also, you know, um, whatever type of um, panels that they have, like uh, DGA, Directors Guild, Writers Guild, okay. subscribe to some of those things as well because you can meet a lot of people in the industry there as well. Okay. So, can you talk about the time you discovered Dave Chappelle? Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Seems ages ago. Um, so, I was doing this show for MTV, and I want to say it was 85, 86. And um, they asked, oh, maybe it was, yeah, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for a comedian to host this show. Then they wanted to do, like, a TRL. Okay. And so they wanted a comedian. So I went to, at that time, the Boston Comedy Club in the Village. And this guy got on stage. And I was like, oh, my God. That right there. Right. <laughs> you guys, I'm telling you. And the thing about the Boston Comedy Club is they knew me as a casting director from MTV. So when I would come and my camera person, they would just be like, they just make a right, big deal right, of it. Right. And, yeah. and I always wanted it to be like you know, low key because mm -hmm. I didn't want people to know. But I found Dave there, and then I um, took him to uh, MTV for an audition. And at that time, uh, Ted Demi, who uh, was related to Jonathan Demi, he was alive at that time. So Ted Demi was there, and then this guy, Joel Stillerman, who worked with DMX, he was there. And I begged them. I was like, yeah, this dude. And they were like... Aww. And that's the thing about being a casting director is that we highly recommend, we beg and we plead, but we don't right. have the final decision. Right. And so um, as much as I begged and plead, they did not pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, but two years later, MTV called me and they were like, can you get that Dave Chappelle guy? And I was like, no, Robin Hood men in tights. He's gone, but he's still my friend. <laughs> so a lot of times that was 
a challenge in being a casting director is that directors and producers didn't believe as much as you did, yeah. and so they wouldn't go with that person. But I can't even tell you how many directors to this day are just angry that they didn't make yeah. that choice. One of my favorite directors, he, when I see him, he's like, Jesse, I could have killed myself. I could have stabbed myself. You bought Mark Lawrence to me, and I said no. Aww. There's nothing you could do. You know, There's too many people right. who have power to make the decision. Right. So. And look at him now. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, and to this day, Dave is still my friend. Nice. Yeah. So, can you name some other like celebrities that some of the beauties might know that you've worked with? Well, I am currently working with Vanessa Simmons, um, Tiny, Zanique. Okay. Um, I work with Jennifer Williams from Basketball Wives. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kim, the musical artist Kim. Okay. Um, I work with um, a lot of people who are transitioning either musical artists um, or um, athletes post because I work with Terrence J and Roxie. Mm -hmm. I'm still with Buster Rhymes. We've been going strong for 17 years, wow. whether he's doing something or not. <laughs> um, and now I'm, there are, there are clients that I pursue. Mm -hmm. And so right now I'm really interested in Van Jones. I heard that he wants to act. So looking at Van Jones. Um, nice, nice. I just recently um, worked with a guy, Kyle Harvey. Um, okay. His album just dropped, okay. and he's in World Star Movie that's going to be coming out. He's the lead in that, so I just okay. can't. But he's an international internet sensation. He oh, did okay. a song with Chase the Rapper. So, oh, love yeah. Chase the Rapper. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, people call me when um, I can get a call at any time. Okay. You know, like I work with Lil Wayne, Ludacris, um, Common. Mm -hmm. Estelle, like nice. I've just been really, really super. Carrie blessed. Washington. Um, Carrie as a, a casting director and auditioning okay. her, never as an acting coach. Also, Notori Naughton, I work with okay. her. Um, I just, I'm, I'm grateful for all of my clients. Nice. Yeah. Are, are there any clients that? Are, are there any like celebrities that you want to work with, like really bad? <laughs> um. Yeah, as a director, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, celebrities. I'd love to work with um, Denzel, mm -hmm. um, Ray Liotta, Mark Ruffalo, Eden Hawk, mm -hmm. um, Viola. Ooh, uh, yes. I worked with her. You did? Kind of. Okay. So I, I, I coach Russell Hornsby, who was Denzel's son in Fences, mm -hmm. the older son, yeah, Lion. Yeah, yeah. So I was coaching Russell in this play that Viola was in with yep. him. So I got a chance to go to rehearsal and see Viola, but this is before people really knew her name. Okay. So now, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I mean, just the that'd greats. That's so cool. Yeah, just want to work with the greats. Right. Of course. Who <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't? Yeah. Now, were there any challenges working in the directing career as a woman? Oh, great question. Yes. There are challenges as a woman working as a director because um, most DPs, directors of photography, are mm -hmm. men. And um, there is this, I don't know how to define it because I've been in two situations recently that I've directed and both of my DPs felt the need to try and unconsciously is what I'm going to say, take over. Yeah. And so I think women have to be a little firmer. And in that, we are labeled different names. And then there's aggression. And it has nothing to do with that. It's just that we have to, we have to, you know, I find that I have to mark my territory immediately. Because what I don't want is the crew to lose faith right. in me as a director. Exactly. So that's the challenge that I find. I just mm -hmm. always have to, like, let the DP know right. in some way or form. I'm the director. Right. I hear what you're saying. You're serious. Like. And, and it's, it's sad that you have to they be have that to way, that. but mm -hmm. there's a thing, I'm not a dude, but there's some sort of ego male something, something that goes mm -hmm. on when women are in control. Yeah. That I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you also wrote the book named The Spirited Actor Principles for a Successful Audition. Can you just talk about what is it about and what it offers for actors? So The Spirited Actor Principles for a Successful Audition was written literally in audition situations because when I was in the room, actors would do things and I would make little notes on post-its like, if I ever got an opportunity to talk, I'm going to say this. And so it was just really combining all of those notes together and giving actors this sort of template of what you need to do 
in order for you to have a successful audition from grooming to preparation to attitude. And so I wanted actors to have something that they could roll up and put in their back pockets, stuff in their purse as like daily reminders. And so that's why I wrote the book. Nice. I think that's very beneficial, especially that it's in like an example type form. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of people understand it more when it's like, I was in this situation and this is why you shouldn't do it. Type right. Of thing. So I right. think it's very effective. Yeah. Now, yes. how can people purchase it? Because I would want to buy it. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> so I'll give you that information too, mm-hmm. but you can get it on Amazon. Oh, and, okay. And, um... It's uh, authorshouse.com. That's, I, I uh, publish it independently. So, okay, nice. yeah, you could go there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wasn't going to wait for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you consider one of your greatest accomplishments as a director? Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't had it yet. No? Not yeah, yet? Not okay. yet. My, it's it will gonna, come. It's, it's my come. film. It's my feature that okay. I'm writing. That's mm-hmm. going to be one of the. That will be the yeah, moment. Yeah, that's going to be the moment. Nice. Yeah. So now, are you working on any new projects? Um, your film. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on my film, which is called Peephole, okay. that I'm writing. Um, I just finished probably one of the greatest accomplishments as a casting director. Um, I cast the slaves in the Legacy Museum that just opened up in um, Montgomery, Alabama, and By- Byron Stevenson headed that. And so Oprah did. Uh, a, a, a piece on it on 60 nice. Minutes. So I'm the actors that I cast, their holographic images are coming out of these cells, so it lasts for eternity. So wow. it's just to be a part of history like that is a proud moment. So Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you can see it. So do you have any last advice for the beauties watching? <laughs> this is what I would say to the beauties. <laughs> the first thing that I would say is that you are enough. So first thing, wherever you are in your life, you are enough. Because I think that one of the things that we as human beings struggle with more than anything is believing that we're not enough. And we have to do something, say something, have something in order for us to be that. And where we are is enough. What you have is enough. Life is a process. And if you, it's a journey. If you want to shortchange or shortcut anything in the journey, you yourself will be that. So allow the journey to be what it is. Because this is what I said to um, one of my clients who is really close to something, right? I said to her, you are never going to be here again. Meaning, you're never going to have to audition as much as you're doing. You're never going to have to do, you're going to have to. Um, hustle, I don't like those words, hustle, struggle, grind. Those are not productive words for me. No judgment. However, you're never going to be at that place again because now you're going to get the job. After you get the job, get recognition, after you get recognition, and then the rest is history. The challenge that most creative beings have and successful creative beings is that they have to outdo themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So when Beyonce did Lemonade, now she got to out Beyonce herself right. and out, be, out Beyonce Lemonade. There's a piece that you can find as a creative person knowing that you're a work in progress and you're building and growing. However, there's pressure in this world that makes you feel like hurry up and do it today. Right. Da, 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 da. Don't listen to the world. Listen to your inner voice. Listen to that space in here. Because anxiety, those things are real and they create mental illness. It does. Because here we are, right? Okay, the past, I tell my children this all the time, the past is over. We have no do-overs. The present isn't here. The future isn't here. The present is all we have. So our present is where we create our future. But if we're angsting about our future that's not here, it's affecting our present. So in life, stay present. Don't get too far ahead of yourself and don't beat yourself up for what you did and didn't do and whatever. Just presently acknowledge who you are, accept yourself for being enough now, Mm -hmm. and just move forward. Live in the moment. I'm just saying. Yes. Uh, And you are enough right now. Yes. Something you could do. Say that to yourself every day. Every day. day. Yes. Mm -hmm. I say to myself every day, I love me. I, and I don't leave the mirror until I've convinced myself of that. Nice. And now I don't have to convince myself as much because I now do really love know. myself. Now you know. And I am enough. 
Wow. Regardless of what anybody says, mm -hmm. I am enough. Right. Right now. Wow. Thank you so <laughs> much. You're welcome so much. I've learned You're so much. So and much. I hope you guys did too. <laughs> Me too. But before you go, I do have a little gift for you. A gift? Oh my God. You can open it. Oh my God. A gift. I like gifts. <laughs> this is the fun thing about swag bags. Oh my God, I'm wearing this. <gasps> I'm so wearing this. It's a girl's this. with beady and brain shirt. I'm wearing this. So go ahead and rock it wherever I'm you go. I'm rocking it. I'm rocking it. <laughs> I'm going to rock it. I'm going to take a picture today Ooh, yes, after my tag. sessions and I'm going to put it on Instagram. Nice. And send me the correct spelling of your name so that okay. I can shout you out. This is gorgeous. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Remember, beauties, that Miss Tracy Moore is a girl with beauty and brains, and so are you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>